great chance and it's not likely to come again. So, what's the information you want? What's the news on this bright day? No, I'm going to try to work it out for yourselves. I'm going to tell you right now, this very minute. I am John Tensel, Dominican Inquisitor, Sub-Commissioner to the Archbishop of Mainz. And what I bring to you are indulgences! Indulgences made possible by the red blood of Jesus Christ! Yes, my friends, the Pope himself has sent me here with indulgences for you! Fine! So it is at this Catholic Church in Wittenberg, Germany, that our next scene of the Reformation takes place in 
some months later, October 31st, 1517, the eve of the festival of all saints, and already the streets are crowding with pilgrims eager to view the relics on the following day. You look up and you see a monk striding rather resolutely toward the north, toward the church. Now, you don't think anything of it, because Wittenberg is also home to one of Europe's finest universities on the north door of the church. It's used quite frequently, quite frequently for professors and students to post items for debate and discussion. And as you go by, it appears that this monk has a parchment in his hand. And you can tell it's written in Latin, but most of you can't even write anyway, so you have no idea what it says. So he goes to the north door of the church, and he kneels down to the door, and he turns towards him, and it looks like as if he's about to give a short sermon. My text is from the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Romans, chapter 1, verse 17. But therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. We are living in a dangerous time. Could be that this is the most dangerous time since light first broke upon the earth. It may not be true, but it's very probably true. But what's most important is that it's an assumption we are obliged to make. We Christians seem to be wise outwardly and mad inwardly. A man is not a good Christian because he understands Greek or Hebrew. Jerome knew five languages, yet he's inferior to Augustine. Erasmus would disagree with me, but perhaps the Lord will one day open his eyes for it. <clears throat> but listen, a man without Christ becomes his own shell. We are content with shells. Some shells are whole men, and others are small tickets. And what are the trinkets? Today is the eve of all saints, and the holy relics will be on display to you all, to all you hungry ones whose lives are made satisfied by trinkets, by an imposing procession and dressings up of all kinds of dismal things. Oh, you will mumble for magic with lighted candles to St. Anthony for your syphilis, to St. Sebastian for the pestilence, to St. Laurentius if you've got a toothache, and to St. Louis to stop your beer from going south. And tomorrow, a few more hours outside of the Catholic Church just to get a cheap rate glimpse at St. Jerome's tooth. Or four inches of St. Chrysostom and St. Augustine. Six of St. Bernard. The deacons will have to lay hands to hold you back while you struggle to walk at the four hairs from Our Lady's head, at the pieces of her girdle, and her veil stained with her son's blood. You'll sleep outside with the garbage in the streets all night so you can stuff your eyes like roasting birds on a scrap of swaddling clothes, one wisp of straw from the manger, and a gold coin specially minted by the three wise men of the occasion. Your emptiness be frothing over the sight of a strand of Jesus' beard, over one of the nails driven into his hands, over the remains of the loaf at the Last Supper. Shells for shells. Empty things for empty men. Oh, there are some who complain about these things, but they speak in Latin for scholars. Who speak out in rough German? Someone's got to build the cat. For you must be made to know that there is no security, no security whatsoever. Praise him. And anyone who doesn't care to sing with me can hide. 
scholars and common folk alike. Now, a few people may have any, any idea of the theological arguments, but they knew that a simple German monk had said some things that had gotten the Pope mighty upset. Alarmed by this calamity, Pope Leo X orders his emissary, Cardinal Cajetan, to meet with Luther in hopes of getting him to recant and take back his sermons and his writings. This meeting takes place almost a year later, October 1518, a small upper room in Augsburg, Germany. Now, Cardinal Cajetan is a cool politician, but he finds in Luther an exasperating stubbornness because before he will take back anything, he demands to be contradicted by the scriptures. Well, the talk is polite for some time, but finally Cajetan loses all patience and lashes out.
is captured by God's own word. I cannot and will not recant, since to act against one's conscience is neither safe nor honest. Here I stand. God help me, I can do no more. Amen. After Luther's mighty declaration and the Diet of Worms, the Reformation was not to be stopped. Already branded a heretic and excommunicated from the Church, he was now, by the view of Charles V, made an outlaw and a price put down on his head. But Luther had many powerful friends, and under their protection, he continued to write sermons, hymns, and articles up until the day he died. But looking at these great historical events really only gives us one side of the personality whose legacy we celebrate today. Because what always struck me is that despite the turbulent events of his life, Luther never lost sight of himself as a lost innocent who clings to God as a child clings to his father. The final scene takes place some years later in Luther's study at Wittenberg, Germany. He is now married to Catherine von Bora, an ex-nun. A child sleeps by his side. Hans. He works feverishly, perhaps, at some articles to be delivered in the coming weeks at a conference in Small Hall. He's old, unhealthy, and forbidden by law to leave his native Saxony. He has had to leave the work of the Reformation to others. Also, the Reformation has become a very political event, with princes taking up sides, even the peasants rising up in bloody started out as a simple question of church doctrine was becoming the beginnings of the church, something Luther never wanted to see. And perhaps on this day, he can't help but feel somewhat tired and bitter. The Pope and his followers do not hear Christ call to them as a shepherd calls to his sheep. This horrifies me and makes me think he will cause a council of angels to descend upon us destroy us utterly like Sodom and Gomorrah. What do you think, Hans? Huh? This horrifies me and makes me think it will cause a council of angels to descend upon us yes. and destroy us utterly like Sodom and Gomorrah. They're, 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 they're the Katie! They're the too strong. Yes, too strong. <laughs> Katie!
bought just a Lutheran movie. If you think Reformation history is a you you got you got a glimpse today. It is an incredibly fascinating story. Uh, so we'll watch the movie uh, at eight o'clock tomorrow in chapter.